it's important for people to remember, you know, people think that today that it just happened naturally, but we had to fight for it. We had to fight in every province and territory of Canada. So I, when I met Joel, I, it's super corny, this is so corny. When I met Joel, it was love at first sight. I believed in love at first sight as soon as I met him. I remember seeing her at uh, the subway. She had on a black leather jacket and her hair was in a ponytail and she did a little wave and I thought she was so cute. Do you remember I that? I also loved her dimples as well. I came out young. I came out when I was roughly 12 and so I didn't grow up thinking that I would ever get married. You know, that was not something that was ever, I never dreamed about a marriage, right? And so by the time the equal marriage fight came about, and I'm in my, I guess at the time, early 30s, or what have you, I can't even remember now. Um, you know, I, I didn't have a deep-seated need to get married. I, the campaign for me and this fight was about the last civil right that we were denied. To have our relationships validated, just as any other kind of relationship, yeah, it was, it was very important and it gave us a sense that finally we are equal citizens in this great democracy we call Canada. Je me souviens d'avoir vu le, le vote à la Chambre des communes. Je voyais les députés premiers ministres qui se levaient, qui votaient pour le mariage. J'en avais la chair de poule à cette période-là. Pour moi, c'était vraiment quelque chose de très, très important. We decided to share vows with one another at World Pride at Casa Loma in 2014. And there we were, you know, under the hot sun. It was a beautiful afternoon and, you know, surrounded by other couples who were there to do the very same thing, to share their vows individually to one another, communally as a community, and, and to say that we're here, you know, and we're here to stay. And as I was uh, working on this campaign, I met my now wife. And so she knew me as the person fighting for equal marriage. And, you know, after we'd been together for about five years, she was sort of like, so honey, when are we going to get married? And I was like, uh, I don't know. I, are we getting married? Why should we get married? Why are we getting married? Because um, it wasn't ever significant in that personal way to me. But then I realized how significant it was to her, that she had grown up dreaming about her wedding. So it became important to me because it was important to her. Where we were married, we wanted to do it outside, and to the north of us, you could see the rain clouds in the distance. But right where we got married, the sun shone and the clouds were white and fluffy, and everybody was sitting on blankets in the sun and watching us get married and and it was incredible for me to see my whole family there even people who had said things in the past before I had come out when I was a teenager or younger so they'd said things that were very homophobic and there they were with smiles on their faces and cheering us on when we kissed it did a lot to undo everything that had happened to me when I was a little um, all of the day-to-day the, the -day traumas that young queer people face. Um, it healed a lot of that, just to stand up there and see them all. Uh, my longtime partner, Greg Lawrence, and I had decided that we would not consider or even discuss whether we were going to get married until it was final. We waited until after it was the seal. The deal was sealed, and uh, now I'm married. For me, the marriage was the aboutissement. It was the aboutissement of a long march because it was like the point, the point of arrival. We were we were from the prisons. We were the criminals. We were the mental health. And then we arrived at the right to be married. So it was all a journey. It was the aboutissement. For me, it was extraordinary to be able to arrive there. And I remember learning of this person, Reverend Brent Hawks. <laughs> and I remember reading of him having bulletproof vests on to make marriages and families that could look like ours, that I hadn't even dreamt of yet, happen. 
So for me, I would like to say thank you, you know, um, to everyone who has been part of the struggle, who has been part of the movement, part of the journey. Um, and I don't even know that thank you sums it up. The day of our, our wedding, when my husband um, addressed all of our friends um, and relatives who had attended in our garden. And he talked about <clears throat> how we had been together for 38 years and had not really had the kind of re legal recognition that heterosexual couples had had for time immemorial. And that finally, finally, at that very moment when the first openly gay judge in Canada was about to marry us, that we could say that now we are equal citizens of this country. And then everybody sang, oh, Canada. When we won equal marriage, that was the moment when the country said, I understand and I accept you.